this coronavirus thing, man, it's pretty scary, you know? Mic check. You good over there? Can you hear me? Do you hear me? <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yo, my name is Sebastian Safela. So the coronavirus is spreading and it's a really, really sad situation. So people are living in fear and in some part of the world, they can't even go to work or go to school. In some areas, they're living in a state of emergency and worst of all, people are dying from it. It's, it's really, really sad and I hope a solution could be found very soon. Now, because of the outbreak, there's a lot of panic and the stock market responded by taking a nosedive. So stock prices drop pretty rapidly and investors are getting out of the market by selling their stocks. So I think there's two different people selling their stocks right now. So investors that can't stomach seeing their portfolio values go down with no end in sight and investors that are selling now so they could buy back at the bottom. I asked people in my story if they should buy or sell last Friday when the market was down around 11 to 12%, and I got a bunch of interesting answers. So I thought I'd make a video explaining my position and what I think most people should do. First, you need to understand that a lot of money is made during recessions. Now, I wouldn't consider this a recession by any stretch, but whenever the market goes down like this, almost everything is cheaper. So if you were to buy, you'd be buying at a discount and you'd be able to buy more shares with the same amount of money. And when the market eventually goes back up, which it always does, then all these shares are going to be going up in value. So don't see the market drop as a bad thing. See it as an opportunity. We always hear that phrase, buy low and sell high. I mean, it makes complete sense. So you buy at 10, you sell at 15, and you make a $5 profit. But is it really that easy in the stock market? I mean, there's a few issues there. So first, it suggests that you would have to be good at timing the market. And then second, you would constantly have to watch what the market is doing to know if you should either sell or buy. I'm going to give you a few reasons why trying to time the market is a bad idea. When trying to time the market, you have to be right twice. So when you buy and when you sell. And no one can consistently predict which way the market is going to go for an extended period of time. I mean, you might be right once or maybe multiple times, but chances are, just like gambling, you'll eventually lose and that might end up costing you a lot of money. Selling and waiting to buy back in means that you miss some trading days. And it has been shown that missing key trading days by not being in the market can drastically reduce your returns. If you invested $10,000 at the end of 2014 and never sold, that $10,000 would have grown to over $36,400 at the end of 2019. If you sold and missed the 10 best trading days over that same period of time, you would have earned $18,000 less. And if you missed 20 of those days, you would have made just $1.9,000 on your money. When you're a frequent trader, the goal is to beat the market. But unfortunately, studies have shown that people that trade the most earn way less in the market because it's so hard to be consistently right about which way prices will go. You also end up getting involved way too emotionally and you could get a false sense of being able to predict the future or being lucky. One cost of frequently trading in and out of the market is taxes and fees. So the IRS taxes earnings from investment held less than a year as regular income tax rather than at a lower uh, capital gain tax rate. And then depending on which broker you wear, you might be paying a bunch of fees every time you trade. So you end up paying more money than if you just held on to your stocks. Now, if your argument for not investing is because you're waiting for a market to drop or for a recession, well, because you can't predict the future, that price that it drops to might still be higher than what it is today. So let's say that a real estate property is selling for $400,000 and then you're thinking that it's too expensive so you wait for it to drop to $350,000. Now over the next couple of years, it keeps going up to a high of $427,000 and then it finally drops after three years but it drops to $410,000. Now the market did in fact drop but now you'd be paying $10,000 more than what you'd be paying for it today. On top of paying more, you miss out on any yield or any cash flow that you could have earned during these three years. Plus, you miss out on all the experience you could have gotten. The same is true with the stock market. And that's why the best time to invest is not at some point in the future, but it's now or as soon as you have the money available to do so. 
If you'd watch my video about whether you should invest in individual stocks or index funds, then you should know that I think that most people should listen to the greatest to ever do it, Warren Buffett. And he says that 99% of investors should not even think about trying to time the market. But I also don't think that I can make money by predicting what's going to go on next week or next month. I do think I can make money by predicting what's going to happen in 10 years. And he says that you'd be better off investing in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund in dollar-cost average over the next 20 to 30 years. I'm not saying investing in individual stocks is bad, but if you're not passionate about it or you're not ready to put in the time to do a lot of ongoing research, then you could just automatically invest a portion of your paycheck to an index fund that meets your needs and that's it. So investing for retirement in the stock market doesn't have to be complicated. That's what I'm doing. Although I enjoy learning about stocks, my focus is real estate, so I try to keep it simple and invest in index funds through my 401k and Roth IRA. Another thing that I do is whenever the market drops more than like 10%, I put in a little extra. I invest a little bit more. What if you say, well, I don't have any extra money to invest in this downturn, so what I'll do instead is I'll sell out of my position right now and then buy back in at the bottom or at a lower price and I'll make money that way. Well, that's definitely a possibility, but there's also the risk of not timing it right because you just don't know when prices will go back up. Now, a better solution would be to always have money available in your savings that you could tap into when opportunities like this come up. I'm a buy and hold investor and I'm investing for the long term. I'm not planning on selling anything anytime soon and I invest the same amount of money every time I get paid regardless of what the market is doing. But when there's a crisis like this, prices could be ridiculously low and that's an opportunity to buy more because I believe that eventually the prices will go back up. I don't have money sitting on the side specifically for stocks. I do for real estate, but I do have an emergency fund. Am I saying that I dump my emergency fund in the market? Absolutely not because that would be greedy and that would leave me at risk in case an emergency did happen. I'll typically put 5-7% to 7 of that fund because that's just what I feel comfortable with. Now please don't take this as financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. It's just what I do. So last Friday, at that 11% drop, I invested most of that extra money. So I left some just in case the market was to continue to go down. Now on Monday, it went up 4%, so if I didn't buy at that time, I would have missed buying at that 11% discount. So because I wasn't being greedy, I was able to lock in that 11% drop, and I left a little something extra to get in on the action in case the market was to continue to go down. Now between now and the next time I get paid, if the market goes below that 10% mark, I'll just invest the rest. If it doesn't, I'll just go back to doing what I was doing before, dollar cost averaging. So there you have it. That's all I got for today. If you think this video was helpful, make sure you like it and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to share this video with a family or friend you think might be interested in that type of content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.